All right. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. We're here to discuss how we can best improve our processes to protect the people of Illinois against corruption and to hold our pol politicians accountable when they break the public trust. As a veteran of the State House and chair of the Legislative Ethics Committee, I'm uniquely aware of the toll that public corruption can have on Illinois resources and working systems. There is no doubt that the accusations, probes, and indictments that have riddled the majority Democrat caucuses organization have many people, including us, concerned about the ethical standards and procedures of our state government. We are committed to reforming the rules and procedures currently in place to allow for more transparency in our government and to give our judicial branch the tools to effectively prosecute the public officials who break the law. For too many years, the corruption of a few bad actors has cast a shadow over the good work done by so many other lawmakers in our capital. We must not allow their efforts to be diminished any longer. More than anything, we are here to restore the people of Illinois' faith in our government. They have to be tired of Illinois politicians and the political reputa reputation preceding itself. So why are lawmakers not joining together bipartisanly and linking arms to get this done and do the heavy lifting that is needed? We need to muck out the dark corners, throw open the windows, and let some fresh air in to clear out the smoke-filled back rooms and blow the dust off the status quo. It is unfortunate that we seem to be meeting opposition every step of the way in our effort to reform the process. This year, the Senate Republicans introduced more than a dozen bills aimed at curbing corruption in the state of Illinois and holding legislators accountable for their actions. To date, none of these bills have been allowed a hearing. We have two weeks left in session and the clock is simply running out. These are ideas that could protect people, the people of Illinois from corruption and they deserve to have discussion, discourse, and then attention and action. I would now like to introduce my colleague, Senator John Curran, to go over the details of our legislation. The legislation that Senator Curran is about to walk you through is the culmination of several bills that we have introduced over the last few years. It includes important revisions to our current law that will add more tools to the toolbox used to fight corruption. Senator Curran. Thank you, Leader Tracy. Good afternoon, thank you for joining us. I'm uh, John Curran, I'm the State Senator for the 41st District. I also spent 19 years as an Assistant State's Attorney in Cook County, both as a criminal prosecutor and as uh, an Assistant State's Attorney in, on the civil law side, investigating and litigating matters of employment, policy, ordinance violations, and, and ethical uh, misconduct. We stand here today to demand more and to, to demand better of the General Assembly. While we appreciate and agree with many of the provisions in Senate Bill 4 put forth by the Senate Democrats, there are s several measures in Senate Bill 4 we do not agree with and quite frankly, Senate Bill 4 as a whole does not go far enough. We have, we have just filed Senate Bill 1350, which is the Senate Republican proposal on eth transformative, meaningful ethics reform for the state of Illinois. Our proposal strengthens the measures found in Senate Bill 4 and includes additional provisions that provide the state with the ability to clean up its own mess without having to wait for the federal authorities to come in and do it for us. There are many positive changes um, proposed in our bill, 1350, but I wanted to walk you through four of them, um, if I could, this afternoon. First, the Senate GOP package allows statewide grand juries for public corruption. Currently, the Attorney General is limited in his use of the statewide grand jury to matters of drugs, uh, guns, and uh, child pornography. It specifically limits and does not or prohibits uh, the use of the statewide grand jury to investigate matters of public corruption. This keeps the Attorney General on the sidelines, our chief law enforcement official. We must unleash the resources of the Attorney General's office in combating public corruption. Senate Bill 1350 would do that. 
Secondly, this legislation grants Illinois state's attorneys wiretap authority to investigate crimes of public corruption. Right now, state's attorneys are currently prohibited from using wiretaps to investigate charges of public corruption, specifically. We must also utilize our local resources to investigate, to build cases regarding public corruption and look to a state like New York that has effectively used wiretapping authority at the local level to build cases in, involving public corruption, centered around public corruption, to root that out and not be in the same situation as Illinois, waiting on federal authorities to do, do the job for us. Additionally, the Senate GOP package gives the Legislative Inspector General the ability to independently investigate and issue subpoenas without approval of the Legislative Ethics Commission that is, of course, made up of legislators. This one's pretty basic. The public's on our side. Quite frankly, the public does not understand why an investigation cannot commence without the approval of oversight legislators. It doesn't make sense to the public, it doesn't make sense to us, and that needs to end. We, we need to restore trust in, in state government, trust in the General Assembly with the public. This is an easy measure and one way to do it. Finally, our bill outright bans legislators from lobbying and has a hard one-year revolving door prohibition before a, leg, a, a departing legislator can begin lobbying state government and the General Assembly. The proposal in Senate Bill 4, it, quite frankly, is laughable when it comes to the revolving door because it has, it has a glaring loophole that would shorten that revolving door to as short as one day. That is not a meaningful ethics proposal. That is not something that's going to restore the uh, trust in, in the, with uh, the people of Illinois and their state government. To sum up, our bill includes everything Senate Bill 4 includes. It just goes several steps further in, in restoring the integrity and the trust in state government. We had one hearing in the Senate Ethics uh, Committee, and that was on April 27th. Where we, strike that, April 21st, where we, where we discussed um, Senate Bill 4. We have not got, all of our proposals have been filed last year and this year, and we have not gotten one hearing on any of our proposals involving ethics change and reform. Our discussion on Senate Bill 4, while productive, was, was, was left with the promise of an amendment in moving forward. It's been four weeks now. We have two weeks left in this General Assembly. We have not seen that amendment. We have not seen the, the, the promised uh, amendments to the bill four, four weeks later. We are wasting time. This is not a process that has been transparent. And with two weeks to go, the matter is now critical. We must pass meaningful ethics reform for the people of Illinois to move this government forward. I would now like to uh, turn the matter over to our um, Republican leader in the Senate, Leader uh, Dan McConkey. Thank you, Senator Curran, Senator Dan McConkey, uh, Senate Republican leader from the 26th District. It's good to see everyone here today. Ethics should not be a partisan issue, plain and simple. We all have the common goal of making the system better to serve people of Illinois. Uh, and there's no reason not to bring Republican ideas forward, and let's have a debate on those. As we are talking about the package here today, which we've put all of these ideas and put them into one thing, have one place to be able to have one kind of comprehensive toolbox that we can discuss, I am reminded of Senator Pritzker's words from the 2020 State of the State Address when he said this, we must root out the purveyors of greed and corruption in both parties whose presence infects the bloodstream of government. It's no longer enough to sit idle while under the table deals, extortion or bribery persist. Protecting that culture or tolerating it is no longer acceptable. We must take action to restore the public's trust in government. That is why we need to pass real, lasting ethics reform this legislative session." End quote. Governor, we agree. But unfortunately, since that point, since he spoke these words, what, 14 months ago, the governor has sat idle on the sidelines. He has refused to put forward his own package. He has uh, failed to address the flames of corruption that continue to engulf this state. We're tired of waiting. We are tired of the inaction. 
The governor has failed in many ways in this administration, and right now, this is key amongst these. If we do not pass meaningful ethics reform that would actually have addressed the ComEd scandal, that would have actually been able to allow us to proactively be able to police our own house, then the governor will have had a failure that is beyond any of the others that he's had so far. Look, we're tired of reading the headlines about yet other co continued corruption that's going on in this state. And let me tell you that for me, this is personal. My wife, Milena, comes from a Eastern European country, the country of Bulgaria, an under communist Bulgaria. It was rife with corruption to the point to where my father-in-law actually was forced out of a job just simply because the boss above him didn't like him, the boss that was politically connected. There was no mechanisms to be able to get in and investigate to ensure that the ruling class in that country did not run roughshod over the people. And we continue to have a situation here in the state in which the attorney general is not allowed to actually be able to use all of the tools at that, that should be at his disposal disposal that are at their disposal of the chief law enforcement officer in other states, it does not exist here. This isn't just about a few outliers taking bribes or breaking rules. This is about fundamentally reforming the system that doesn't allow us to police our own house. I believe it's un-American, it's unfair, and it's just fundamentally wrong. We're supposed to hold ourselves to a higher standard because by definition, we are elected to represent the people. And right now, the trust between this building and the public is broken. And so I call upon the governor and the Senate Democrats to support these uh, very important anti-corruption initiatives. There is no reason to do as little as Senate Bill 4 currently does when we have so far to go to be able to clean up our state. And with that, we'll turn it over to questions. Well, looking at a couple of, and thanks for having us, by the way. Looking at one or two of the recent scandals, arrests, indictments, et cetera, how would this uh, package have uh, snuffed those out or stopped them in its tracks? Well, think about the, I mean, let's take ComEd, and you're talking about uh, wiretapping authority at the local level that certainly would have unleashed. There are 102 local prosecutors where legislators go home, these, these deals are conducted uh, in secret, local authorities there w would be able to actually open, start investigating, and, and bring those matters before the grand jury here, but they have to build a case. You see the federal authorities use wiretapping evidence as an incredibly important tool as they build uh, criminal cases uh, in rooting out corruption, but their, their resources are limited. Illinois, in policing itself, has vast resources that are on the sidelines. We need to deploy those resources to enhance and supplement what the U.S. Attorney's Office does throughout the state. Do you can you make, I, one more, please. Uh, can, can you make unethical lawmakers more ethical? Or can you get more ethical folks to run for office in Senator Springfield? Transparency is the key to ethical uh, lawmaking. That's why, you know, as we look at the process centered around ethics proposals and Senate Bill 4 specifically, it has been anything but a tran transparent uh, process. We've had one committee hearing. Every Senate Republican uh, proposal has not received even, even a, a subject matter hearing to discuss in open with the public. We have not gotten the public's input on any of our, any of the proposals that are on the table, Republican or Democrat, in the General Assembly uh, this session. Tra uh, transparency is a key, tra and this process has not been transparent. You're alluding to partisan hostility. Do you really want Kim Fox listening to your phone calls? Kim Fox, the, the proposal has, um, and by the way, I worked for Kim Fox, so that may, uh, but Kim Fox, um, uh, or State's Attorney Fox, would have to go before the chief judge of the cr criminal division in Cook County, as any prosecutor would have to. There's judicial oversight. They would have to lay forth their case in order to get that authority for wiretaps. That is the same process used um, in the federal. It's the same process used in New York. We, I have great faith in our judicial branch um, as a fair and neutral arbiter uh, upholding the laws of the state, and, and I have no doubt that that would be employed as someone that represents a portion of Cook County in Cook County and, and beyond uh, throughout the state. But the prosecutors are partisan creatures. Grundy County State's Attorney Jason Helen took to a microphone outside of this building this last summer and led the crowd chanting, lock him up, about Governor Pritzker. 
do you have any concerns that this would create a partisan bounty hunter program? I have no concerns because that process would have judicial oversight. There would be no wiretap. There would be no grant of authority without uh, review of the court first. That that we are we are a society of laws. Judges are charged with um, being neutral arbiters on those laws. If we don't have faith in the judicial system, then we've got to start. We've got to go back to square one. So no, I I, I do not share your concern, Mark. Senator, in your bill, you have higher uh, dollar amounts required in the statements of economic interest. So, for example, gifts from lobbyists, you would require them under your bill to report at over 1000 Senate Bill 4 has that 500 So can you just explain the thought process for the higher requirement? You know, I mean, we were looking to streamline uh, those reports, really get at what is most uh, meaningful and what what – you know, what information do we want to make sure is out there to the public in a very understandable manner? So, um, you know, currently our uh, disclosures, I don't think it makes sense to anyone. So that, that's a number we arrived at. We would certainly, we, we, as we say, we support many of the measures in Senate Bill 4, and that's one we would have no uh, problem with, no argument with. We just, you know, independently arrived at a different number. Why do lobbyists need to get these gifts? I'm straight. Why do lobbyists need to give you gifts? They don't. Why not just ban them all? That, that, that also, you know, we're approaching this from a disclosure um, uh, standpoint, but that certainly would also be uh, another approach. Well, you know, you talk about the revolving door, and, and in some cases I understand, well, I'm, I'm not hiring Jay to be a lobbyist. I'm hiring to be a consultant. He's going to be a helper to my corporation. Uh, how do you get around that kind of, Chicanery. The one of the proposals in Senate Bill Four that we, we stand in, in full support of is the uh, you know broad disclosures on not only lobbyists but also consultants and making consultants register under the lobbyist uh, uh, with the Secretary of State under the Lobbyist Act. So that I believe will uh, address that issue on consultants. How do you deal with the subject of attorneys in the General Assembly who represent clients before zoning? The um, legal, I mean, legal professional services um, do not fall under the category of lobbying. That is, uh, that is language that is cl being cleaned up in Senate Bill 4. Um, and, and uh, you know, again, we have two weeks to go. None of that's going to happen if, if, if we don't start moving forward um, with ethics immediately. Just a question of jurisdiction. Can a state attorney in say Sangamon County go after an elected official in Cook County if they if the act happened how, how do they parse that uh, where, where the act occurred so I mean that's yours that's how jurisdiction is determined between the 102 uh, uh, individual counties I think we have time for one more question if there is one more why one year on the revolving door ban? Many good government groups asked for it, said two years would be good. A lot of states actually do have two years. How come only one? You know, our belief was one year would be a giant step forward for a state that has no revolving door um, ban currently. So, you know, our, our bill is both what we think would be effective in terms of making someone sit on the sidelines for an entire calendar year. Um, from the functions of state government, as well as, you know, trying to land on something that we believe we can get passed. Thank you, everybody, for coming. If anyone has specific questions for Senator or any other members, uh, talk to me. We can get them with you one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> 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 I'm going to hear that guy. <laughs>